Uh, hello, everyone. I'm here to introduce Joshua Hollingsworth and uh, the artists in the exhibition Artifact. The work of Drew Leshko, Jardine DeBerry, Marissa Stratton, and Mary Henderson exemplifies the capacity of art to capture a moment or object in the time that may then be observed and reflected upon. The exhibition Artifact presents artistic approaches in documenting human connections, environments, and culture with the understanding that what is created today will inform and impact tomorrow. Here to speak with artists Marissa Stratton and Mary Henderson is Joshua Hollingsworth, our Exhibitions and Community Programs Manager at the Delaware Contemporary. All right, Josh, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Morgan. And I'm so excited to be here with uh, both of you, Marissa, Marissa and uh, Mary, to talk more about Artifact. Um, I was so excited to kind of construct this idea and then match the artist with the theme. Um, I thought it was going to be much harder than it was, but it wasn't. Um, I think for me, it's, it's a huge space. And so, um, you know, scaling it down to four artists was, I was like, I don't know if I could easily do 10, you know. Um, but for me, the big idea was looking into the diversity of environment um, and how that plays a role in artist subject matter, um, essentially exploring uh, works of art that can see, be seen as footprints in time um, or an artifact that can be learned, discovered from, from years to come. So um, I guess we'll start with Mary. Mary, you have um, some oil paintings in the show. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? um about the about the medium in particular or um let's talk about the medium and I guess how your work how you see your work fitting into the theme of the show so yeah so the the medium I think that um you know at the opening I was I was talking to a couple of the artists about how um how all all of the artists are influenced I think by kind of vernacular photography or like, you know, kind of casual imagery. Um, and my work, you know, is very specifically, uh, I very specifically construct my paintings um, in oil paint with this kind of, they're the association of grandeur, right? And permanence that oil paint has. And I think that I'm drawn to the idea of, of rendering something more, um, more kind of long term that might ordinarily be just a little piece of peripheral information. Um, so the way that I I make my paintings, I have you know just like hundreds and hundreds of photographs that I take when I'm out in you know very public spaces, and a lot of the time the the imagery that winds up making a painting is something that I wasn't initially drawn to that I wasn't trying to capture. It's just some little piece of peripheral information um, that then, you know, becomes the object of kind of longer term contemplation. So it's kind of like a little bit about, you know, permanence and impermanence, uh, which I think is is a lot of the, the theme of your of your uh, curatorial vision. I like that. And, I, and you're kind of hitting, hinting at these fleeting moments, kind of capturing those fleeting moments. And it's exactly what photographers do. Um, <laughs> with those in the city or, you know, in urban sceneries. Um, can we talk about the environment? Um, mm -hmm. you're, you're capturing these folks. Are they all different? How does the environment relate to, I guess, that fleeting moment that you're trying to capture? So for this body of work, the... The, the I, I've sort of removed the identifying environment so that um, so that a place is defined by the people who who gather in the place um, rather than the built environment, the architectural space um, where they choose to connect that you know people and and human connection um, make a place. Um, uh, I also take out, that background information so that it it makes it slower to to for the image to unfold, slower for a viewer to um, uh, come to a conclusion about the action. Uh, I want I don't want people to look and say like oh that's a frat party or whatever you know, to, but to sort of 
look at body language, think about how we interpret body language, think about, um, you know, just, just slow down that, that read a little bit. Um, and I think that, that for me, it's really interesting to see uh, how people interpret, you know, what, what's going on in an image just based on that kind of like physicality and this sort of gesture and repetition of gesture. And um, I think it's, it's, it's interesting how much overlap there is between different kinds of energies um, that we wouldn't necessarily associate with, with, <clears throat> you know, having a positive or a negative vibe necessarily, you know, you, it's sort of, I don't know. It, it confounds the meaning a little bit. You know, that's interesting because at the opening, I was kind of watching and observing how people were um, interacting with the, with the works. And I think they were, some of the same things were coming to mind. Um, you know, some people were focused on there not being a defining environment. Um, and they were kind of inferring where that, that uh, painting was done or the, the photograph or the reference was captured. Um, so it's interesting because that so that kind of translates to the viewers. So um, kudos to you, Mary. That's that's amazing. Uh, thank People you. People are naturally curious. You know, yeah. they want like you want for no reason, right? Why do you want a narrative? But we all do. You you want to know mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. going on um, when we when we see a group of people. Yeah, and it's interesting to watch like how much of it relates. Uh, amongst different different um you know backgrounds and, and diversity of, of folks and communities um similar to your work we have work by marissa stratton let's hear a little bit from marissa um uh you're also an oil painter um but you have you take a different twist and i want to talk about the i guess the textural component to your work mm -hmm. oh how does that play into the larger sch schematic of, of your of your work I think it's very essential to the work. I think when I started oil painting, I was a little stingy with the paint. It would slowly build up. You know, it didn't have a lot of texture. But as I started working on this series, um, the physicality of the paint became a necessary component of the execution, I think, because of the way these images are sourced. So all the images, um, that I've painted are sourced um, from digital sites, so social media, um, uh, web conference sites like Zoom, so Instagram, Zoom, um, and these images are inherently flat. They exist on a screen that has no texture, there's no depth, and so painting and taking advantage of the dimensionality and solidity of oil paint that potential I think was super exciting for me because it has this almost sculptural quality at times when I'm painting um, and it feels like I'm bringing these images kind of into the three dimensions a little bit. And that kind of is also why my work is also moving into a kind of more sculptural um, immersive experience too. And active, right? With the kind of like the zoetrope um paintings that you have in the middle of the gallery. Exactly. Um, and I think also that also begs these objects to be touched in a way as well. Like, you know, you want to kind of feel the uh, imperfections, the kind of topography of the paintings. And it's also similar to the way that these uh, sites also beg for us to, to engage with them, you know, constantly. They, they survive off of our attention and our engagement and so making objects that also require that is super interesting to me I think um and also it, I mean there's so much in common with this work to what Mary was saying as well like thinking about oil painting as this very slow this very physical process um and the way we consume digital images is so quick it's it just you know oil painting kind of is in opposition to that quickness, the way we kind of consume images right now. Um, so it's kind of really beautiful to take an image that's maybe meant to be looked at for, you know, like five seconds. And then for me, it's hours that I'm looking at these images and studying that. 
uh, ex extending them. So into space and into time. So, you know, it's cool. <laughs> but you, on the topic of environment, um, you've kind of identified those environments via Zoom or via Instagram. How, why were you so intrigued by, and I, and I know we were all going through like the Zoom and the Instagram and the social medias, but in particular, why were you um, so intrigued that you created a body of work that represented it? Um, well, before I started, I mean, the first body of work that was kind of engaging with this was the Instagram series. Before that, I was making kind of these large, you know, traditional paintings, like multi-figure compositions, people holding phones. It was very kind of, you know, referencing the tradition of oil painting, making work about social media, but not of social media. Um, so I was... trying to like talk about it but I didn't know how to I think in a new and interesting way um and then I just kind of looked at my screen and I saw paintings I saw hundreds of paintings um and that is kind of how it changed and then I started that series before the pandemic so because I was looking at Instagram as as paintings or potential painting objects I saw the zoom grid and I saw compositions, windows, um, kind of aligned and gridded in the same way. And also I know Zoom and Instagram are, you know, almost universal experiences now, but they are deeply personal. And they kind of capture like this intense range of emotion that can some sometimes be dulled, I guess. It can seem monotonous and it can seem like really slow, but it has, you know, I've experienced the full range of emotions on all of these platforms, like jealousy and like love and like, you know, interest, obsession, like, you know, all of that is not dull. It's like expanding and a lot of people don't see it that way, but. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> I think I'm most intrigued by the scale. Mm. Especially the um the Zoom the Zoom session. How like how do you I guess when you were thinking of putting oil paint on canvas or wood panel, yeah, that's not how did that come about? Well, it 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 was you know an incremental process. Like I started with these, mm -hmm. and it's made a lot of sense as you know for scale, um, and then when I started working on zoom there you know there wasn't much difference there like just a little bit yeah um, sorry i don't know if you heard <laughs> um but these were the first zoom paintings i made they were kind of at this size um but then i was just kind of like well what if i made them the same scale that i experienced them at which is mm -hmm. the size of the laptop uh, <laughs> You know, I'm not working on a monitor. Like I'm, I'm, on, I'm always on the laptop. So when there's more people, they get smaller. So I was just like, I need to make them small and really kind of push myself. Um, I'm always interested in challenging myself as a painter, whether that is like through you know medium restrictions or like scale or through sculpture. You know, always finding ways to like push this just a little bit. You know, I, I love painting, but I'm always kind of like searching for something else while I'm painting as well. Um, I think we I think we hold success in being innovative, um, you know, so I think that's a, it's a good thing to be innovative and kind of see how you can push the boundaries. Uh, mm -hmm. all, offset yourself uh, from others. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, on the topic of scale. So we have these kind of miniature pieces or uh, five by seven phone size uh paintings mary can you talk about the scale of your paintings because I, I know we have a fairly large one but then we have um some smaller pieces and so i think for me the impact is surprisingly the same like my eye gravitates towards larger paintings sometimes but i think i could go mm -hmm. either way myself. yeah i mean i, I you know initially i felt like um, with this series of work, I had was like, I want to make big heads, you know, and so that, that's kind of where um, the the scale of the larger work came from. 
but I, yeah, I agree with you. I think that, um, you know, the, the smaller ones still feel, still feel pretty big to me. And part of that is because I think, I almost think about them as, um, the scale as talking about like different kinds of proximity. Um, so the larger, the larger piece is sort of, I mean, for me, the, the feel is more like, you know, you're like physically very close to someone. Um, and the, the smaller ones, I think are kind of getting at the idea of like, at least for me, that, that feeling of sort of, um, you know, that tunnel vision or like sort of seeing something from a distance that that's is impactful to you in some way. Um, so I guess that, yeah, for me, I guess that that's how the different kinds of scales function. It's, it's more about like where you are in relation to the person. Um, that's true. That makes sense. That makes sense. There's one question that I have, um, and you know, we can leave off unless you guys have things to add, but um, Mary, we'll start with you. Thinking of, um, you know, your works as a tool for documentary um, or as a tool or calling it as an artifact, just calling it as it is, how do you see your work fitting into the realm of artifact? Um, I mean, I, th I think a lot about documentary and sort of uh, what, what my rules are for fidelity to a certain situation. Um, and I've definitely done paintings that were more kind of composites. Uh, yeah. And I think a lot of people assume that my current paintings are composites, but they're not. Um, they're just people in overlap and interact in really weird ways. Um, so it's kind of one of those, those arbitrary rules that you set for yourself, like the, um, for this body of work, the the kind of configurations of people, I I will take stuff out, but I'm generally not not putting stuff in. So that feels like a like like more adhering to the documentary, um, the documentary approach, and like I think the different different documentarians have kind of different rules for sort of how. Um, you know, where their, where their hands come in, you know, what kind of liberties they take, like how removed they are. And I think it's something that if you're, um, if you're painting representationally, uh, even if, you know, it's the most like uh, screaming kitty, um, even it's the, if it's the most kind of like wildly fanciful, you know, distorted kind of figuration, when you're engaging with a, another human being, there is that kind of question of like, how am I going to engage with them? What does it feel necessary to me to be, you know, really kind of deadpan accurate about and where do I feel like I can sort of take take liberties? And I think that yeah. that's, you know, that line always always changes where you're inserting yourself and where you feel like, oh, I have to be like, quote unquote, objective you know, to the extent that I think I'm maybe then going off on a tangent and not answering your question, but. No, I, was, <laughs> I would, if I were to unpack that a bit, I think I, I enjoy having that freedom and liberty as creatives, um, you know, and I think that's why we love what we do so much is because we have that freedom and liberty. Um, and I think you're, you're spot on. You kind of decide your, on yourself whether, you know, how accurate you want something to be and you have all the rights to augment that in any way. Um, so thank you for answering that. How about you, Marissa? <clears throat> How do you see your work fitting into this larger um, idea of artifact? I... Do... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I think my work is kind of perfect for this theme because I see, I mean, all my images are sourced from screenshots and these are documents in themselves um and these are um you know maybe not seen as important or like historically important but there's a whole digital landscape that um is being engaged with every day by like millions of people and um it's creating a digital history it's creating like a collective history of the present you know constantly like, that's what i was thinking like an archive 
yeah exactly um and so painting is just making these images you know making people see how important these images are it sucks that i have to paint something for someone to find value in it um or to see it as something that is worthy of your attention in a different way um but it is kind of a beautiful process um and in terms of like staying truthful i mean i think me and mary have different approaches to like abstracting I guess because I mean Mary she's like really digging into like it's extremely rendered and almost the image is almost extended um and then for me it's almost abstracted in a lot of ways um and I think I have to do that with the scale um of the works you know and the way I paint does not require it it doesn't like I just can't you know if I'm making like a hundred little paintings I've got to, you know, let the brushes, let the brush strokes exist and kind mm -hmm. of reveal the images as well. And I actually, I also have some paintings that are quite abstract, but I was just painting what I saw. I did a couple of paintings where um, there are, are people on Zoom and their images are getting distorted because they're, you know, putting backgrounds on and it creates an abstract image. It's like an image generator. Um, but I am just painting what I see, you know, in terms of like the rules I give myself, I'm like, I just paint what I see, I collect the images, I choose, and then I paint, you know, like, um, and these images are all digital. Um, so I think it's almost perfect. <laughs> you know what I found interesting? I, you know, the idea of once you put things on social media, it's there, right? It's there forever. Um, and so... I was like, well, she's kind of doing a doing us a double service here by you already have something that's been put in the digital Ethernet, right? And it's living on forever. And you've pulled that from an archive. And now we have a digital and, you know, like a, a physical creative rendering of that archive or, or all of that artifact. Um, so that's the connections I was making. Um, I, I mean, when I was making the Instagram series, I was just overwhelmed because um, I made 75 images in that original series. And, um, you know, when you en engage with 75 images on Instagram, that could be like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Five minutes described in physical objects. Um, and I'm like, what does a lifetime of image accumulation look like? Um, what does that look like? Images piled on top of each other, you know, like, what is it gonna take for us to realize that like, we accumulate so much like mental and digital, um, like, I don't know, like, what's the word? Like, it's not trash, it's like beautiful, um, but it's just a lot, like we're accumulating constantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that every artist um, is in some ways like make, Every work of art is is an artist making a case for what they what is important, what they think is yep. important, saying like, no, you should pay attention to this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's also every every work of art is an artist kind of willing something into the world that that they want to exist. And I you know I think of Marissa's work. It's it's like willing willing something physical and tangible into a world where you're where you're missing that um and i think you know my work similarly is about kind of like willing that that density of shared space into mm -hmm. a world that you know that i'm missing so i think in some ways we we're probably both responding to the events of the last few years in, in different ways kind of picking up a different thing that's like i long for this this mm -hmm. thing yeah sorry you're good when I was, when you think about like human connectivity that has changed so much since 2020 um not even just how we communicate well even how we communicate face to face that has changed you know it's, whether it's six feet apart or um you know you're no longer introducing the shaked hand it's sometimes it, like it just it's a vocal interaction and that's it um so it all has changed and you guys are taking the liberty of documenting that um, and so I think that's why I wanted to include uh, not only YouTube, but also 
Jordian and um, Drew Leshko as well, because they're accomplishing in the, in the same way, um, but in very farther from like the oil painting spectrum, right? Um, we have uh, photographs and um, some sculptural pieces. So I, I do love their take on it as well. Um, do you guys have any questions for each other or for me or any last comments? Mm. <laughs> On the spot. Mm. Let's see. Well, Mary, does it have to be about, I, I know Mary has made some small works. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about that experience because I, I saw that you made images that were meant to be handheld and I was like, mm -hmm. ah. You know that I love that. Um, like the idea of touching. Yeah, um, like, also, like strange. It's it's very it's very weird to touch strangers. You know, in this object form. Um. Yeah, and I think, but yeah, I think. Um, I mean, your work your work is similar, right? In that you've like, you know, you're you're are you're pulling it from. Uh, from public sources so there's a you know there's always like an element of of voyeurism if you're if you're painting people that aren't you haven't sort of invited into your studio to model for you right um and so yeah I do think that that sort of that tactile impulse like voyeurism I think puts maybe puts a, a negative spin on it it's this kind oh, of this I mean social media like you become the voyeur, you know, like right. living digitally, you are like engaging in like voyeurism like every day. Um, but in a positive sense, it's also, you know, this kind of, um, you know, longing for for connection and, you know, sort of tenderness towards human beings. Um, I think that, that uh, at least for me, and I, I feel that in, in your work as well, that that sort of tiny tactile quality um, kind of evokes that idea of, you know, you're holding or wanting to touch this like precious, this precious object. Uh, you know, miniatures were historically so often um, meant to be carried with you as a sort of, as a token, as a remembrance of a loved one, right? So we have this association of like, deep care and tenderness with that form um and i love the idea in your work of it of that that added layer of of devotional de a devotional quality yeah. yeah so so often not like reciprocated too like that's mm -hmm. the kind of struggle of living online is like you know feeling deep love and deep emotion and never receiving it back you know mm -hmm. painting is just like a form of love and obsession I think sometimes um and you kind of have to be to create you know to work with the medium that's it requires time and um attention and I love the intimacy of like a small scale painting you know it kind of breaks that barrier of you know history of oil painting being seen as something as you know distant and like above you know everything else as a medium um and so scale and touch is all it's always breaking through you know that whole history yeah. I think there's also a little bit of a sort of like feminist undercurrent to like to insisting on or to to that format um which is you know like it, it pushes you in more into a realm of craft mm -hmm. um you know the kinds of painting that women often did uh, when they were allowed to paint were like, you know, tiny watercolors, china painting, these, you know, small, um, small scale things, which are then, of course, subsequently devalued. And I think that there's something about making work that is on that scale that's, you know, again, a way of saying like, no, this is, you're making your case for what, what is important and meaningful as an artist. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because, you know, you have you kind of have these uh, the same viewpoint comes to mind, like when you're just working with a specific medium, how the value behind just working with that me medium alone. Um, and then the there's a something else to be said about what you receive from the final product. Right. Um, 
So I'm really glad that you guys, Marissa, you asked that question. That was a great question. I enjoyed this conversation. Me too. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, um, I really hope you guys have a chance to come back to the gallery um, before it goes down. If and just shoot me a note, but I'll be happy to meet you guys if I'm not here already. Um, and those watching, I really hope you guys have a chance to make it in the gallery as well before the show closes April 23rd, I believe. Um, there's exceptional work included, um, and I've, I'm excited to have you guys all all here for the season. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Well, I want to thank you all so much for participating. Thanks, Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.